So it's been about six months since I've had Dolby Atmos in my theater room. So I figured I'd give you a general overview and do a quick review, so stay tuned. So with the exception of adding a bunch of speakers around the room, not much has changed in the past several years when it comes to home theater audio. Now there have been a lot of different audio formats that have come out to support all the extra speakers in the room, but none of these formats supported adding speakers to the ceiling. But in 2012, Dolby released a new format known as Dolby Atmos that added actual ceiling channels for a more immersive experience. And later in 2015, DTS released a format known as DTS-X, which also adds support for ceiling speakers, even though DTS-X has not been as popular as Dolby Atmos. So both of these formats make for a truly unique experience with movies and ambient noise such as rain and other background noises, but it really comes to life with things like helicopters and objects flying overhead. So in order to take full advantage of Dolby Atmos, there are a few things you need. First, we'll start with speakers. Now, Dolby Atmos speakers can be configured one of two ways. You can either get actual in-ceiling speakers or you can have what are called Dolby Atmos most enabled speakers. So ceiling speakers are gonna be self-explanatory. That means you actually have speakers mounted in or on your ceiling. However, Dolby Atmos enabled speakers actually sit at ear level, but aim up towards the ceiling to reflect the sound off the ceiling in an attempt to sound like ceiling speakers. Now I do know there are some situations where you either can't do a home theater receiver or you just prefer the look of a sound bar. And in that case, they actually do have Dolby Atmos enabled sound bars. And the Atmos enabled sound bars are also gonna have have speakers mounted on the top of them to reflect sound off the ceiling back towards the listening position. And another thing you're gonna need is an HDMI connection. So unlike older audio formats, Atmos, DTS-X, and True HD are gonna require an HDMI connection. And if you haven't already, I do recommend for you to go and check out a video I did a few months ago about home theater audio, as I explain everything you need to know about HD audio formats and the best way to connect everything. Now, another thing you're gonna need is a media player that's capable of Dolby Atmos as well. So this is gonna be a streaming device such as a Roku, Fire TV, Chromecast, Blu-ray player, or whatever you use to play movies. Not only do you need to make sure that your media player is capable of Dolby Atmos, but you also need to make sure that the app that you're watching the movie in is capable of it as well. And to make matters even more complicated, not all new movies have Dolby Atmos, so it's definitely something you wanna check if you're curious. Now, unfortunately, this isn't something that you're gonna find on old movies, but if you wanna know if it has it, you're gonna look somewhere for the Dolby Atmos logo. Now, if you're streaming the movie, you can look somewhere on the screen of the app where you're playing the movie from, or if it's a Blu-ray, you can look on the back of it to look for the Dolby Atmos or DTS-X logo. So now on to my thoughts on Dolby Atmos and my experience with it. So in my basement, I have a 7.2.4 setup and this consists of seven full range channels, two subwoofers and four overhead or height channels for Atmos. And I have all of these speakers connected to a Denon X6300H. So I originally planned on doing Dolby Atmos enabled speakers in the front and rear height channels since I didn't really want to cut into the ceiling, but my basement setup didn't really allow for this. Now, even though I did know it was going to be kind of difficult to do Atmos enabled speakers in my basement, I did get a really good deal on some Klipsch RP280FA speakers, which are some really nice floor stand speakers that actually have Dolby Atmos enabled speakers built into the top of the cabinet. So I figured I'd give these a shot and avoid having to cut into the ceiling. Now, as far as the rear height channels, I had nowhere to put Dolby Atmos enabled speakers. So I ended up having to give in and cut actual holes in the ceiling. And I ended up adding some Polk Audio RC80i speakers. Now these speakers were highly rated on Amazon and pretty cheap, so I figured I'd give them a try. Now, before I give you my opinion on Dolby Atmos enabled speakers versus versus actual in-ceiling speakers, I first wanna let you know that there are a lot of variables that come into play with the way that an Atmos enabled speaker is gonna sound in a given space. So considering that Dolby Atmos enabled speakers are gonna rely on reflections, you have to consider the distance between your seat and the speaker, the height of the ceiling, the angle of the ceiling, and other surfaces that are either gonna reflect or block the sound. So before I actually installed my ceiling speakers, I figured I'd do some testing with the Dolby Atmos enabled speakers. And to my surprise, it actually did sound like the sounds were coming from the ceiling. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not like magic or anything. If you're looking directly at the floor speaker, you can clearly tell that that's where the sound is coming from. But when you're really engrossed into a movie, it can definitely trick you into thinking the sound is coming from above you. So depending on how sensitive you are to directional sound, 
and your setup, it may actually sound just like ceiling speakers to you even though it's not perfect. That being said, once I did actually install the Polk audio speakers, I was blown away by the difference in sound with in-ceiling speakers versus Dolby Atmos enabled speakers. Not only was I impressed by the quality and the sound dispersion of these cheap Polk speakers, but it was a completely different experience. Now, if your space doesn't allow it, or if you just really don't wanna cut into your ceiling, then the Dolby Atmos enabled speakers are a good alternative, but I definitely recommend in-ceiling speakers if you have the option. Now, as far as Dolby Atmos and DTS-X in general, I will say that I'm overall happy with these formats. The only real issue that I have is that not all movies are shot in Dolby Atmos or DTS-X, and the other issue is that some Atmos movies don't actually use the speakers enough. You may only get a few points in the movie where the speakers are actually active. Now to be fair, that isn't a fault of Dolby Atmos or DTS-X, that's more up to the movie producers, but I would like to see a little bit more sound coming out of these speakers. All right guys, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. As always, if you found it helpful, go ahead and mash that like button for me. Don't forget to share the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Post your comments and questions in the comments section. I'll respond to your questions and I'll see you guys in the next video.